Hello folks, it's Julie. Today I'm going to talk to you about research. If you are writing a book that is not from your personal experience, which most books that are not autobiographies are going to include some experiences or some technical knowledge or some kind of research material that will not come from something that you have personally done, um, then there's going to be some research involved. And first I'm going to talk to you about the concept of doing research on what it's like to be a, a certain kind of person that maybe you are not represented in that demographic. And then I'm going to talk about researching facts and specific uh, locations and uh, information that you may not have ready at your fingertips. Um, first, I'm not going to spend too much time on the thoughts about diversity and whatnot because a lot of my other videos have gone into that and you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it at this point but I will emphasize that if you're writing about a gender or a race or a religion or etc that you don't belong to and you want to accurately incorporate that aspect of the person into their personality which of course you should then there's going to be research involved um, say someone is a different sexual orientation than you are. Um, and I'm not just talking to straight people who want to write someone who isn't straight. I'm also talking about, you know, somebody who might be gay trying to write a straight person. You know, we all kind of believe things about other groups that may not be true. We have all been exposed to those things. We may have different uh, propensities for incorporating those into our beliefs about those groups. Um, so basically portrayals of other people are always going to end up being some balance of truth and maybe stereotype. Um, and basically if I were to write about myself, um, some of what I say about myself, if a character of mine had all the same demographics as I did, there would probably be some things in there that are very typical, maybe to the point that people would say that's a stereotype about your type of person. So, you know, you can't necessarily just assume that anything that's a very common trait is a bad thing to put in there, um, because most stereotypes are based on either truth or come from something true, uh, like down the line. Um, and you'll want to figure out more about what those things are before you incorporate them into your portrayal of a character. Um, and this is uh, not just your protagonist, but people around your protagonist. I've seen an awful lot of people attempting to diversify their casts, and they may decide that somebody has a Spanish-speaking friend and they don't personally speak Spanish, so they put words into the Spanish-speaking person's mouth that you know, authentic Spanish-speaking people are very unlikely to talk that way. Um, so, you know, if you're writing a group of people that you don't belong to, um, your research is going to have to, of course, involve basic research, looking things up, but it should also include um, both, like, a primary audience, somebody that is of that background, is is being directly asked before you write it or before you make that a part of a character you're talking to somebody who um who knows the answer as to whether that spanish-speaking character would say that thing um or whether you're basically showing everybody who reads your book that you don't know anything about spanish speakers um, and you can generalize that to a bunch of different situations um, but then, you know, you also are going to want to, after you write it, you're going to want to show it to different people who are in that group. Um, because not every person who is in this demographic is going to be equally prepared to criticize you. They may have different opinions. I've, I've actually had that happen where when I wrote a book that had a male main character, it was my first time writing a full novel from a male perspective. I had contradictory comments from two male readers who said, no man, no uh, male 
character would actually act like that. This makes me think, oh, this must have been written by a woman. But then a different male reader said, I actually really appreciate that you put this in here because I'm really tired of people believing that all men do this, that, and the other. So, you know, you're going to get some contradictions and it can be very difficult to figure out, like, who do you believe? But if you ask enough different people and you weigh that against your common sense, um, and you may even specifically ask people, maybe in a writing forum or just, you know, your group of friends or some family, say, hey, I got this commentary, what do you think? Since you know more about being a man than I do. Um, you know, or you can even present it as... Um, an exercise where they don't know what they're at being asked to comment on. For instance, I had a story one time that did not reveal the gender of the character I was writing about on the first two pages. It wasn't really intentional, but just the way that I was writing it, I wanted people to, you know, guess. Uh, I wrote a Facebook post, hey, do you think this is uh, a particular gender. Did you read this as a particular gender? And I put it in a, I put it so that people would have to read the passage first and then afterwards I asked them, so what gender do you think this person is? If you thought of one, did you, did you have an impression? And it was split down the middle. It was really interesting. There were some people who felt that because they were a man, they believed it was a man. Some people believed that the way that it was written made it seem like it was a woman. Some people thought, oh, this person, um, you know, mentioned doing an administrative job, so I automatically thought, oh, it's a secretary, and I therefore associated that with a woman. You know, I know that that's not necessarily a good, a good thing, but that's what popped into my head. You know, that kind of thing. So um, sometimes you can just poll people and say, hey, what did you think about what I did here? Just a basic question that you can learn a lot about whether you're doing the right thing with regard to your presentation of characters. Um, and now I'm going to go to my other part of the video where I talk about informational research. Um, so if you're writing about a place that you've never been and it's a real place, or you're writing about a fantastical version of that place, or something that's heavily influenced by your beliefs about a place, like you know, say you're writing in a mythological world, but it's heavily based on Celtic mythology, so you want to go, you know, to that area of the world. Um, so, obviously, the best thing to do is always going to be, if you have the means, to go there. To go there yourself, and this is, this is why, because anything you can look up on the internet, anything you can get from another person, is a story that they're telling you of what they saw, what their impressions were, what observations they gathered. And you're gonna get different ones if you go there. The things that are important to you are gonna be the observations that you pick up and that feeds into your writing style. There's no way to get that from from another person. Um, you can you can ask and this is my this is my other um, my other uh, suggestion if you can't go to the place if it's just not practical to go to the place or a place that's like it then um, you know write down a list of questions or thoughts or observations that you would want to make in those places um, or maybe go to a similar place and write down what you what you noticed about the place like what color the sky was or you know if there was a particular flower there if you heard a lot of birds that, that sort of thing. Um, and then ask someone, hey, what kind of birds were there did you notice? Was it crowded? Was it not? What was the weather like? Was it humid? Was it not? You can look that up, but it's, it's not the same as uh, observing it directly. Um, and you may be able to prompt people to cough up information that they might not um, volunteer by themselves. Um, so there's only so much you can do by deciding to incorporate someone else's story about a place into your story. It's always going to be connected to their story if you don't observe it directly. And, you know, places is just one. Um, experience is another. Say you have a character who went mountain climbing and you've never been mountain climbing. It may not be practical for you to go mountain climbing. If it is, do it because you will learn about the equipment. You will learn about what the feelings that you'll have going up that mountain are like. You will 
see what people act like. Um, you'll figure out like when do your uh, muscles get really tired and um, when do you get dizzy if that sort of thing happens to you or your character. The, um, the observations that you can get from directly experiencing something, there's just no replacing it. And this should sound really, I mean, obvious, but um, some people think it doesn't matter. Some people think, I can just look up in a mountain climbing book what equipment they use and read some mountain climbing stories. Um, that's all very good. That's, that's great. Um, but if you can't do it yourself, watch some videos of people doing it. Hopefully you can get like first person video of a person doing it and you're not going to be able to smell what the rock smells like, but you'll be able to see some things, hear some things. Um, really take this seriously because um, if you haven't had that experience yourself, you're just going to be borrowing someone else's and you know maybe it'll show, maybe it won't, but um, you want to get as far away from having to fake it as you can. Um, so some people who have done that, you know, if you're writing about somebody who's had a baby and you've never had a baby, they may be able to tell better than everyone else whether you're faking it. Um, if you're writing about a spiritual experience and you've never had that spiritual experience, you're just trying to imagine it, then, um, you know, it could come out more hollow than you want it to. Um, anything from not really knowing what goes into pet care to uh, trying to write about being a musician and you're not a musician, musicians will be able to tell very quickly that you, you, uh, you're faking. Um, so um, the, the takeaway here is if you can go to the place, do the thing, have the experience somehow, that is number one recommendation. If you can't get it, directly. I mean, obviously, you're probably not going to be able to go to space if you're writing a story that's in space. It's unlikely that the average person is going to be able to go to space for research. It's just not practical uh, in this day and age anyway. So, um, you know, you can, you can get some direct video, you can read about it, but don't just read other people's impressions of what they noticed you've got to find a way to observe it yourself somehow. And that that is just, that is so much more valuable than just collecting facts from the internet uh, about <laughs> what you think weightlessness would feel like or um, little anecdotes that you're stealing from other people about uh, having a pet collecting all their pet hair or, you know, poopy diapers with babies that you've never taken care of. Um, the way that children talk when they're very young. I almost never see people do that correctly in stories, that uh, little kids don't really talk the way that a lot of authors write them. Um, and, you know, if you spend a lot of time around kids, you know that they don't talk like that, and you'll feel like this person has not spent any time around small children. It's faked. Um, so, I mean, there are worse things than getting a couple facts wrong getting a couple of uh, observations less than authentic, but why do that to yourself? You know, you as a writer have a power in your writing, in your words, to choose the filtered experience that your reader will have. And why not give yourself the best chance through various forms of research to bring that to them in the most vivid detail that you can, in the most authentic detail that you can, and uh, bring them into what only you can do through the words that only you can conjure. Um, that's, that's why you bother to write something instead of just telling people to read your favorite books. Um, so if you think that you're bringing something special out to the world, then this is something that's really going to help you bring the best flavor of it to the world that you can. And that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.